All right, let's pray. Lord, we come to your word this morning. And Lord, your word is truth and life to those of us who find it. Anoint your word to each and every ear and each and every heart in this room. That your word might come alive to us and that we might learn to use it when we need it the most in our lives. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen, amen. and amen. Today, if you heard from the, the gospel today, <clears throat> it was something called the Beatitudes. And we think of the Beatitudes as some romantic thing that is spoken of in the scriptures, you know, about blessed are they who mourn, and blessed are they to do this, and blessed are they to do that, right? And we've been, some of us may have heard this since we were kids, right? Well, today we're going to look at it from, from a, a, a unique point of view, all right? And it's from Luke, anybody who's looking it up, <clears throat> if you hear about Luke chapter 6, verse, starting with verse 17. <clears throat> and if I could read. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Luke chapter 6. And if I, oh, here it is. Starting with verse 17. It says, And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and, and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed be the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, from their company, and shall reproach you and cast you out, cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did the Father unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have you received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did, the father, did their fathers to the false prophets." If you listen carefully, it's the most wackiest scripture in the Bible. <laughs> Can you hear it? What is it saying? It said, blessed are you when everything bad happens to you, and woe is you when everything good happens to you. Wouldn't that be opposite of anything you would ever think? Now, we're, we're reading it. There is a, um, what should I say? when they came up with the word blessed and they were trying to get it from the original text Matthew, the book of Matthew was one of the first books that was written in Hebrew Okay, when they were trying to figure out what the text would say for blessed there was no word to be used that could be used for the word that they were trying to come out with so hence they came out with the word blessed as the closest that they could come but the word that was used in the original Hebrew when it was spoken was ashri. It means, okay, something that is present tense. You know, we say, you're going to be blessed if this happens to you, right? Or, <clears throat> you're blessed if all these persecutions happen to you. When do you think you're going to get blessed? In the world to come, right? That's the first thing you think of. But in actuality, he wasn't talking about the world to come. He was talking about the present tense. And the way it should be read is, blessed are you because you are persecuted. Right now, you are blessed. And what it means is, it doesn't mean so much blessed as much as it means 
okay, that you should be happy. <laughs> that people kicked you out. That all these things happened to you. You should be happy. Rejoice. That is, and when you, when you look at it in the original text and you look at it as a verb, it means to be happy and live and to walk righteously and be joyful. You know what it means to be righteously? It means to do the right things even though they're doing bad things to you. But yet, at the same time, be joyful. Now, these people that they were ta that Jesus was talking to, he was where? He was in the area of Galilee. The area of Galilee was an area in in Israel, okay, that was known for its rebels. It was known for the people that just, you know what I mean, they were kind of like they there was the roughnecks area. Okay, and they were always being persecuted by the Romans and misunderstood by even the average Israelites at that time because the area was considered to be a really rough area. And so they were always having all these things coming against them. Things were happening to them constantly. So you can imagine when he says, blessed are you when you're persecuted. Can you imagine what the audience was thinking? Has he lost his mind? <laughs> you should be joyful and doing that you know that you're doing the right things. He's following me now? So understanding that shows us something about life itself. Because what does he say to us? Let's walk through it. Because each one of these is in an order that's very specific. It says... And he lifted up his eyes, and his disciples said, Blessed, remember, present tense. That means right now, your boss is yelling at you, and he's telling you you're a miserable, and you don't look right. Whatever he would say. <laughs> you're not doing it right. And what would you do? Well, that man, I don't know. Take him out, because he has no idea what he's talking about, right? Because <laughs> you can feel it, can't you? Right? Or that person that comes up to you and says, Man, you're ugly. All right? And I don't think you're doing things right. What? <laughs> Me? Are you crazy? But what is Jesus saying? He says to walk with joy when you hear that. Now that goes against the grain. It makes no sense. It says, so whenever you hear the word blessed, think of walking which means doing the right things with what? Joy. So blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Walking with joy. Okay? Because you're poor. You hearing it now? Right now, have joy because you're poor. Why? Because yours right now is the kingdom of God. So that means when you find a place in your life that is poor, and I'm not talking about just financially poor, I'm talking about what? <clears throat> I'm talking about that you in your life recognize who you are inside. Recognize your poorness. Blessed are you that hunger, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. So what is he saying to us? He's saying that if you would learn to walk joyfully when bad things happen to you, guess what will happen? You will receive the kingdom of God. You will receive joy. You will be filled. Are you following me? And when you learn to do that, either the people will walk around or scratch their head. Has Neil lost his mind? <laughs> These are spiritual principles that will teach you how to walk in life. <clears throat> Blessed are you that when men hate you and when they shall separate you from their company, that means kick you out, shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for Jesus' sake. Blessed are you means right now 
It means this present tense, you are blessed. So in those sufferings in your life, what can you find? You can find an inner strength that will learn, teach you how to get through. That's exciting. Instead of falling on what? On our animal instincts that says, that guy touches, that guy touches me one more time, I'm going to take him out. <laughs> right? He ripped me off one more time, that's it. Now he's not saying to lay down and just take it. He's asking you to do what? To walk. You know what it means to walk? It means to do the right things. With what? With joy. That's what it means to be blessed, to be happy, <laughs> in other words. Even though it doesn't look like you should be. Even though everything is going wrong. And when it comes to Jesus' namesake, you can even rejoice more, right? That <clears throat> in that day, joy, leap, it doesn't say just be joyful, it says to leap with joy. All right! <laughs> yeah! Who used to say that? If you read about it in the epistles, the Apostle Paul, he would say, bring it on! Now, I know this seems, okay, Father Leo, have you lost your mind? Because I can tell you how hard this is to do. If we're honest with yourself, it is going to take practice to do it. But what does he say? That he says in his word that if you, they that wait upon the Lord, he will do what? He will renew your strength. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not be strained. You will have the ability to walk through life when everybody else is walking to their death. Because why? What do you see? You are seeing God in everything. You're seeing him at work. You're seeing him in your relationships. You're seeing him in every aspect of your life. And because you're seeing him there, you're able to rejoice. What happens when someone says to you, Brother Andrew, you, you, you're, you're, you're a no good person. You want to kill him, right? But if I was to say, what, 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 is, what is he seeing when he hears that? Sorry to use you as an example. He's okay. worried about himself. Right? He's worried about my, his image and, and, and how he's perceived. And we get insulted because of that perception, don't we? Yep. We get insulted. And that's not the way I am. Fortunately, we can't even see the way we really are anyway. And so what is God saying? He says, don't get so upset. But be willing to look at yourself. That means to do the right things. And to do what? Listen. What do we normally do? We don't listen. We react. Listen. Because if you listen, what will happen? You will hear what God is saying to you. And you will find out that He has your best interest at heart. Even though you are poor, even though you are a sinner, even though everything might be going wrong, even though if you proclaim the name of Jesus, they kick you out. Why? Because you're living how? In the present tense. You are blessed. Bl blessed are you to learn to walk in God's ways, in the righteous ways. And when you learn to walk in those ways, and you do it joyfully, what will happen? The blessings of God will begin to flow. If you read, I think it's in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, I might not have the scripture exactly right. You'll, it's about the blessings and the curses in your life. And the first whole first part, it talks about all the curses that will take place on you. And right in the very middle of that, it says that um, because you did not walk joyfully with the Lord. That means that you have the ability to control it. You can make a choice in your life. Will you learn to walk joyfully and see Him in your life? Or will you walk by seeing what you see in your life? That everything is miserable. That the whole world is falling apart. And your life is all bad. 
and all these people around you, they did nothing but screw you. You know what happens to people like that or really get like that? They become paranoid schizophrenics, right? Because everybody's out to get them. <clears throat> everybody's out to screw you. But no. God is saying, look within and listen. That's why the most powerful prayer in the entire Bible is Shema. That means hear. Shema, hear, O Israel, you. Hear what? The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God is Echad, which means one. That means that the glory of God fills the whole world. And if you can see it, you will see the glory of God. So blessed are you who see God in everything. Blessed are you who walk joyfully with the Lord even though you know how poor, sinful sinner you are. Because when you do that, what are you doing? You're bowing yourself before God and what is He doing? He says in His Word that if you would humble yourself, that's what you're doing, right? Then He will do what? He will lift you up. He will raise you. And when God raises you up, that's the best that you can get. That's the very best that you can get. But if in this world, the conclusion, if you have everything you need and everything is going perfect and you've laughed and you've had joy and you've had all these things without going through that, it says you've already received your reward here on earth. Because the kingdom of God is not something that's so far off that you cannot see it. It's right here and now. Because Jesus taught us the kingdom of God is where? It's within. It's within you. So you can learn to walk in the bless, blessing to his word. Lord, we thank you for your word today. For truly your word is truth and life to us. We ask, Lord, that you would come into our lives and that you would teach us how to walk righteously before you. And that, Lord, we would walk with joy. Even though we find ourselves poor, alone, and with problems, that we would see you in everything, Lord, and that we would be determined in our hearts to walk as you command us to, to be blessed, to be really, truly blessed in you. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I hope that was simple enough.